This video is sponsored by Harry's. Hello DIY friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer, and today we are traveling back to some very known territory on this channel to give it a little refresh, so to speak, and that space is my bathroom. Of course, this is another episode of Homemade Home, a series where I take you through my DIY journey to make over my 150 year old plus farmhouse into the home of my dreams. Yes, last year, one of the first spaces in my home that I tackled was my bathroom. It started lilac purple and the finishes were, well, let's just say not my style. So I transformed this bathroom into a quaint little farmhouse dream space. However, the one area I did not tackle was the shower space. I just put up a floral shower curtain and called it a day. Hey, no hate, a girl can only do so much in one video. So today we are going to focus on that shower space, give it a bit of a refresh, put on our best DIY caps and think some budget friendly solutions and really transform this space. And before we get into it, of course, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any more. So much fun stuff is going down this summer. I don't even know where to start. So make sure you are subscribed. With that said, let's jump into this crazy bathroom transformation episode. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. Water. Okay, DIY friends, welcome to a very intimate shot of me in my bathroom. Anyways, welcome to my bathroom. You guys have seen this space before. Literally not much has changed in this room, like nothing. I'm, I'm still obsessed with it. I still love it in here. But uh, there is one little area that needs a little work right there. <laughs> we replaced the shower head with something very cheapy, but like just quickly replaced it. We also changed the bar. This is a curved bar to kind of give you more space in the shower. If you guys remember, my ceiling in the bathroom is slanted. So when I'm showering, I can actually see you over top of this. And then when I get out, I have to bend down and it's actually even worse for Jeffrey. It's not good. Okay, so let's step into my office here. And uh, as you can see, there is this lovely tile, um, and by lovely, that's kind of doing it a favor. This is like a sticker of marble, and then it was like implanted on top of the tile. So it's pixelated, like you can see that it's pixelated. What is with that? Um, it actually has this little soap dish. Um, I'm just gonna say I absolutely love this soap dish. <laughs> so my phone case is actually waterproof, and so I watch YouTube videos while I'm showering. I don't know if that's weird. Maybe you guys watch me while you're showering. Is that weird? And I put my phone on here, so I actually really like this ledge. It's gonna stay. So, I mean, the tub itself is quite nice. It's in good condition. So it does need some updates, some simple updates to kind of give it a high-end look without spending a ridiculous amount of money. Can it be done? Oh, you betcha. First off, I just want to make it known that I was looking for budget-friendly solutions for that tub area. If I really wanted to break the bank, I would just rip that entire bath area out and retile. I would do a stand-up shower, the whole shebang. But for now, my goal is to just give it a refresh so that we can just live with it. But to break down those goals, this is what I wanted to accomplish. First and foremost, to replace the shower hardware to something more unique and trendy. Refresh the tiles so we don't have to look at the weird decal tile anymore. Remove the shower curtain and create a budget-friendly version of an industrial frameless fixed window screen that sits on the tub. This is what it looks like. The, they're like these in beautiful kind of French door looking industrial window panels. I have loved these from the first day I saw it. I thought this was so cool. The ones that you can just write out buy, they're quite expensive. I mean, a little bit more than I was willing to spend. So I kept thinking there has got to be a budget friendly solution to do this. So those are my goals. I mean, all of it feels pretty achievable, right? 
day one wasn't all that exciting. Like I mentioned, my first goal was to replace the shower hardware. So I purchased this matte black shower hardware that had a rain shower head and an adjustable hand shower head, which makes bathing a dog much easier. Of course, nothing is ever as easy as it sounds and it required us to change out some of the pipes to make the new hardware work, which meant we needed access to our plumbing without disturbing the tile. So Jeff and I cut a hole in the wall from our hallway instead. Hello. I love that most projects just create this domino effect of work for myself. Um, it's just so great, you know? Ooh, creepy. <laughs> we then installed the new fixings and by golly, we still had water running out of the pipes by the end of it all. Thank you, DIY gods. <laughs> Just kidding, friends. I'm not gonna shave my legs, but I am gonna shave a bit of your time to talk to you about the sponsor of today's episode, Fairies. <laughs> Okay, so admittedly, there are times where I get so busy with work that my personal hygiene can fall to the wayside and I suddenly find my legs going from this to this very quickly. So back in September of 2020, I actually switched the household over to Harry's because I was just such a fan of their razors. I personally have always used men's razors for both my legs and my <coughs> face. I mean, what? Face hair. I just think the blades are better and they tend to last longer, but the cool thing about Harry's is that they don't just market to men. They just believe in a razor that works well at a fair price no matter who you are. So this razor here in my hand is called the Truman Handle. First and foremost, I love how this razor feels. It is slightly weighted and has a rubberized handle with a textured pattern that helps you grip in the water. It's also ridiculously easy to get razor refills delivered straight to your door every few weeks and it's only $2 per refill. I also have very sensitive dry skin. In the past, I always got those horrible red bumps that are so painful. But I've been using their foaming shave gel and I have to say it has gotten me through this last winter season because it has aloe, it's got cucumber and hyaluronic acid worked into it that is just all such good things for your skin. And I mean, I can finally show some leg this summer. <laughs> Uh, probably not. Just not a Schwartz person. Beyond being a fan of the product, why I love supporting a brand like Harry's is because they support great causes. They give 1% of their global sales to nonprofit organizations that provide mental health care to veterans and LGBTQ plus youth in need. They also provide fair price razors for everyone. Ladies, no pink tax, no outrageous price tags, just premium quality at an extremely affordable rate. Harry's provided me with a special code that allows you to redeem a trial set for just $3 when you go to harrys.com slash DIY Danny. You will get a five blade razor, a weighted handle, a blade cover, and their foaming shave gel. It's an incredibly great deal, so try it out. All right, let's go back to the DIYs. Okay, DIY friends, it is a brand new day. I am in my tub. My tub is currently ripped apart. There's a hole on the other side of the wall, so now we are committed. Time to do some bathtub surgery. I gotta stop sounding so creepy when I do that. Let's do some bathtub surgery. That was way more creepy. <laughs> let's just go. don't need to be wearing it yet. This is the tub and tile etching cream. So what this is designed to do is take away 80% of the work, which I'm like, your girl is all about. Essentially it goes on, it eats all like the glossy side of the tile. And in literally 10 minutes, we are going to be ready to paint this entire space. So I'm gonna put my mask on, get my gloves on, and then uh, let's get going. We're done! 
So now we wait five minutes. Actually, it was more like 15 minutes, so to speak, but I was just making sure that that tile was good and etched. But once that wait time was up, you just take a wet cloth and wipe it away. And then you just wanna make sure that that surface is dry before moving on. I do notice a difference in the tile. Like it does still have a little bit of a shine, like a sheen to it on the top, but you can feel the difference. It's definitely rougher and it feels less smooth. So I am guessing that it did what it was supposed to do. <laughs> so I am moving on to the tub and tile. I'm just gonna grab it here so that you guys can see. This is a Rust-Oleum tub and tile refinishing kit. So this is uh, an epoxy acrylic formula. One thing I did uh, read about this that I do wanna say is that when this is all said and done, it does say don't clean with the bleach because it can turn it yellow. So I just thought that was something interesting to note. I got my Dexter gloves on and uh, we're gonna go mix part A and part B and then we're gonna get painting. So let's do it. Are you ready, tile? High five, let's do it. So like I mentioned, I was going a more budget friendly route. The kit costs around $50 and you can find it at most hardware stores, but it's just a really simple way to give your tiles a refresh without having to replace them. A nice fresh white coat. If you are a longtime subscriber, then you'll remember when I did a similar cover up in my cousin's green tile in her bathroom. Now to cover those tiles, I ended up sanding the tile down, priming it with a kitchen and bath primer paint, coating it with a low luster porch and patio paint in ultra white, then created a sealed top coat with the bare concrete brick and tile sealer. And I will say, this technique is foolproof, friends. I actually got my cousin to film a little video to give you guys an update on that bathroom because I just wanted you to see just how well that bathroom tile was holding up even one year later. So about a year ago, my cousin Danny completely renovated my entire bathroom. So I thought I would give you a bit of an update on the painted tiles that she did in the shower, which turned out wonderfully. A year later, still going strong. Here are the tiles. A year later, there aren't any chips or cracks. They've held up really well. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? She was so formal about it. <laughs> I love it. So there you have it. The one thing I will say that going that route, it is a little bit more expensive than going with the tub and tile Rust-Oleum route. So I'm just saying it, you can do either or option, but uh, one might just cost a little bit more than the other. And I will list all the product for that and this one that I do in the video down below. So I mixed up my epoxy mix one to one part A and B and gave it a good mixing for three minutes and then got started on the tile painting using a paintbrush as instructed. I will say this, there were some spots on the wall that the tile paint didn't want to adhere to. I'm not sure if that was just a missed spot with the etching cream, but I think if I did this process again, I would likely do a soft sanding coat after I applied the etching cream just to be safe. The entire paint process took about an hour to finish, but overall it was pretty painless other than the fact that it just smelled horrible. The fumes from that product, wow. All I'm saying is make sure that you have a window you can put wide open and you're wearing a respirator mask because I don't know how you would get through it if not. It is officially glossy white in here. Oh, it smells so bad, but I think the second coat is going to be a game changer. So I'm gonna wait two hours and then I will come back and do a second coat. But either way, I am now on the waiting game, but we're gonna move on to our next DIY, which is very exciting. So let's go. Okay, so we've made steps to replace the bath hardware. We've made steps to refresh the bath tile. And now it was time to make steps on my budget-friendly industrial window panel. I'm so excited. So I ended up sourcing this 180 swivel tub panel from a place called Bath Depot. It was $200 and had a simple black matte frame and glass front. I actually ended up getting this product on a discount because it was a product return from January. So I was feeling pretty good about this save. Once my glass was cleaned off, I did some math and determined the size of each window and cut these window sizes on cardstock to be used as my sizing guide to map out each industrial window. 
I simply used a three quarter inch masking tape to do this because I knew it wouldn't adhere to the glass and it was the right size that I needed. And then I basically worked backwards from that and taped out the inside of each window with blue painter's tape. At that point, the day was just getting late. So my lovely friend just joined me to help speed up the process and just get her done. It is finally time to see if I messed up. <laughs> I am pulling off the white and it's gonna feel super good. But I gotta be super careful not to pull up the blue. I think if I did do this again, I would definitely do the tape underneath and then do the boxes. I don't know if it would have helped. It's hard to say because maybe it would have been harder to navigate the squares. I don't know. Seems to be working. Oh my gosh, you know what this reminds me of? It looks a lot like uh, Mario Kart right now. You know that one level where you can like go up on the different levels and like, you guys know. Okay, so I was trying to figure out the best way to create the lines for this. When you're playing with water getting into crevices and you're DIYing it, there's always room for error. I'm using an oil-based spray paint, so it is going to work in a wet situation. However, I'm only putting the spray paint on the outside. Second to that, I was worried that it was gonna scrape off glass very easily because normally spray paint doesn't adhere to glass very well. So then I called Rust-Oleum and in fact, they did say, yes, you use the etching cream on the glass. Still a little apprehensive. However, I'm gonna put a mask on, we're gonna do some etching cream, and then we're gonna prepare the surface for spray painting. So, yay, DIY. Once the etching cream wait time was over, I simply removed it all with a damp rag. And you could definitely feel the difference on the glass, so I figured this was already a positive sign for success. Then using an oil-based spray paint in black, I carefully covered the entire frame, doing multiple small bursts so that the paint would not pool in one spot on the glass. Just do a little lift out. Yeah. Should I come look? You can see in the middle and on the sides. I think I should do one more swipe through. Now I did need to do multiple layers, but I wanted to wait for the first layer to completely dry before I added a second one. But in total, I think I did about three separate coats waiting for the paint to dry between each coat. To finish my DIY day, I then put my mask on and again got prepped and ready to paint my second coat on the bathtub wall. The second coat definitely made it better, but I could tell it was going to need a third coat. What a drag. But after the second coat, the tile was looking pretty darn good. I will say this though, I do have an opinion on that tub and tile paint. Now the instructions say you can either apply it on with a paintbrush or you can use a spray gun. I did it with a brush because I didn't want to bring in my spray gun. It's honestly, I think all the prep to do it with the spray gun would be worth it to just give it a nice clean look. If you like a high gloss look, then this tub and tile is perfect, but I do recommend you use a sprayer. That's all I'm going to say. It is just preference and you have options. Good morning. It is another day. The smell in here actually isn't so bad. I turned the fan on last night and it like sucked everything up. And this all looks great, but I do kind of feel like it needs one more coat, so I'm gonna do that. So wish me luck. Let's let's go do another painting montage. <laughs> Something we all love. I just finished. I don't want to take my mask off because it's really stanky. So let's go downstairs and go see the window. Okay. All right, so we're back in the studio. I feel like my nose has started to get like a bruise from wearing the mask. The door, we are ready to go. We're gonna start to remove it from this side down and see what we got. <sighs> Cross fingers for me. And we're just gonna take this very, very slow. I mean, it needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but honestly, I'm like, okay. And what's kind of cool, it's like those textured strips that they put on stairs so that your, your feet grip, that's how it feels. I mean, I guess we'll find out how it holds up over time and how it cleans. So on the other side, it looks like that. 
It's like perfect. It literally looks perfect on the other side. Let's clean this up. Oh my God. So we just wait, we're now we're just waiting on tile to dry. We're gonna clean this up. And then I just have to caulk the edges on the bathtub and like, we are almost done. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get to work. Instructions. This is not what this shows. What is this rocket science? So it was the final day of this bathroom refresh and I was excited to install all the new bath hardware and get the door in the shower. The install of all things was pretty seamless. When drilling into tile, you just need to use a masonry drill bit and a hammer drill to get the job done properly. I really dislike following instruction books. I just, they're nauseating to me and it drives Jeff bonkers, but um, I think we got through it and it was a pretty seamless process. And both Jeff and I got the door installed together. This is definitely a buddy build installation and uh, I was basically there. I mean, we still needed to clean up some walls with a fresh coat of paint. I also installed a hook inside the bath shower, but I mean, we were basically there, right there, almost there. So with that said, let's just take a quick look at where the bathroom started. Gross tile, a bathroom shower bar and curtains, stainless steel hardware. Well, here it is, DOA friends, my final bathtub refresh. under $600, I was able to completely refresh my bathtub space into a cool, trendy, modern shower. As per usual, the power of DIY prevails. I was just happy to get to the end so that I could shower. I think I went three days without showering and I gotta say, it wasn't good. You know, I am excited for the day that I get to just rip it all out and start from scratch. But until that time, I will love my budget-friendly solution and uh, I think it works. I will do a follow-up on my Instagram in a few months, so make sure you are following me on Instagram at DIYDanny so that you don't miss that update. And of course, a big thank you to the sponsor of this episode, Harry's. Don't forget to use the link in my description box to redeem your trial set for $3 by going to harrys.com slash DIYDanny. Let me know what you thought of this project. Is this something that you would do in your bathroom? And as always, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye. Bye.